Hiya, uh, hope you're doing alright out there. Um, thought I'd been planning on making this video for a while, just haven't got around to it. It's quite complicated to sort of think about it. It's going to be two parts. Um, but I want to look at films, my top 10 films uh, depicting viruses. Obviously, we're living in a global pandemic at the moment. And this subject has turned up uh, predominantly in science fiction and horror movies. Um, it's quite difficult. You know, when uh, looking at this, because there's only uh, some films, when we go through this list, that you can say, oh, that is a virus film. Um, uh, often they uh, intertwine the virus with other genres, uh, particularly the zombie genre. So that's been quite a tricky one uh, to kind of decide uh, how to play it, really. So what I've tried to do is just come up with a kind of mixture uh, of... Um, uh, movies and um, you know hopefully uh, it will uh, give us some food for thought but um, uh, you know a TV show I used to really love uh, which was about a virus uh, obviously digressing a little here is Survivors the great Terry Nation uh, TV show of the 1970s uh, came to that a bit later on in life and there was a great remake of that on BBC which unfortunately finished after two episodes but what was interesting about that is it followed the typical, or one of the typical virus film plots, in that there's a global pandemic, it's a virus, people are dying out, people have to go out and find, survive somehow, and find like-minded people. Um, obviously, The Walking Dead is a show uh, that does this as well, or that deals with zombies and the undead. We're not sure what the virus is with that. But that's a really common theme, uh, and as we go through the films, there'll be some, some films will be like that, will be featuring that idea. You've got a survivor, they're looking for other survivors, people they can work with, basically, and possibly form new communities. Um, I seem to remember possibly survivors has something to do with crops, uh, and that's something that's explored in science fiction, No Blade of Grass, very obscure 1970 British science fiction film uh, based on the death of grass by John Chris Christopher. Never on TV, he's got Nigel Davenport in it. Anyway, this, this film was a consideration for me. It's pretty solidly made, but there's something cool about it. Um, but again, it's that thing, some survivors, they're trying to make their way to the Lake District to find safe haven. Um, and another one uh, similar to that, or a similar theme was actually used in Interstellar. Um, Interstellar's obviously you know, a big scale science fiction film, but there was a blight. Uh, crop blight and I can't remember if that was caused by some kind of virus or just over over farming um, uh, another theme that I've not put in here is vampire films so vampire films are technically virus films uh, and some of them explore that more than others or two I would pick is the original TV film Salem's Lot um, basically the, the James Mason and the master land in the town and slowly uh, they turn one two people into vampires, they turn other people. And like the virus, they make contact with one person and then that turns to two and to four and the town slowly becomes infected. And by the end of the TV show, you know, they're having their final record with the master and a lot of the town have either been turned into vampires or they've left. There's one bit where the sheriff leaves. Um, a bit like a, a kind of wild west, you know, uh, western where the, the sheriff, you know, the town's going to rack and ruin and the sheriff goes and it's, it's lawless. Um, and uh, another one's, I think it's Daybreakers, he's got Sam Neill in it, and they're kind of vampires, a kind of society of vampires, uh, and they have to, like, you know, control a blood supply uh, to feed themselves, but it's kind of done more in a mechanised way. So, again, it's that thing, when you go back to Bram Stoker, um, you know, the, the, the vampire um, Dracula and things like that, it's, it's a viral idea, they're spreading a kind of disease, and that's altering humans. Okay, so that's sort of typical plot. So the first film I've picked is the first film, uh, earliest film that I could think of that has a virus in the plot. But what it is, it's kind of per, a crime slash piece police procedural thriller. But in this sense, uh, although it features the police, the policeman is actually a doctor. Um, so uh, a doctor played by Richard Widmark is basically uh, tracking a virus and the person carrying the virus is an escaped criminal played by Jack Palance in the films called Panic in the Streets uh, and it's from 1950. I think there's two reasons this is of significance. Um, firstly, it's shot predominantly on location 
uh, and it's one of the first films to do that um, and in that respect it's basically taking its cue from Italian neorealism so basically after the war uh, Italian neorealist director like uh, Roberto Rossellini with Rome Open City uh, Federico Fellini was kind of more Italian neorealist back then and the film The Bicycle Thieves as well uh, they would shoot on location in the, the, the sort of war-torn remains of, of Italy uh, and it brought a new reality to cinema and basically the American filmmakers um, kind of ran with this and went oh we're, we're going to shoot on real locations a film by Fred Zinnemann called The Search from 1948 I think that's set in Berlin again in the sort of war-torn ruins um, no war-torn ruins with panic in the streets I think it's in New York um, that it's set but basically like I said Jack Palance is an escaped criminal but he's carrying a virus and they need to track him down it's track and trace in order to do that uh, instead of getting the police uh, have a doctor with them Richard Widmark um, the other factor with it is a director by Elia Kazan who's one of the great post-war filmmakers unfortunately named names to the House of Un-American Activities so that rep uh, tarnished his reputation as a person uh, but he made On the Waterfront, Viva Sabata, Sabata sorry, um, East of Eden, uh, basically helped invent the method acting style or how to direct that style of acting on screen. Um, so, you know, uh, Palance and um, Widmark kind of fit into that acting style. There's still kind of more studio actors, but there's a bit more gritty realism about it. So the film's an exciting thriller. It's a race against time. Uh, you know, can he track down the virus in time? It's a track and trace film. Okay. And just another point I was going to make about it, I was looking at my notes, and this was a film that was maybe going to make the cut, um, which I do really like, even though the final third of the film was reshot, and that's why it was so expensive, is World War Z. And World War Z's a zombie film, but it takes the same idea. Um, Brad Pitt's character is a UN health guru, I think, if I remember rightly. And really, he's kind of, kind of tracked down uh, the cause of the virus. He's trying to come, uh, find a solution to stop the virus. Um, so in that respect, uh, he's travelling all over the world to do that. Uh, the Richard Widmark character in Panic in the Streets is travelling around New York, or whichever city it's set in. Um, if I just have a look on here, uh, it will tell me which city it's set in. New Orleans, there we go, it's not New York. Um, sorry, I should have checked that before. Um, but um, yeah, that's um, actually, just looking at the cast list, I've forgotten, also has um, Barbara Bel Geddes in it who was Miss Ellie in Dallas. But anyway, Paddy in the Streets, yeah. So it's using that plot device. So number nine, I'm going for, you know what, I watched this film at the pictures when it came out, and then I uh, I watched it again shortly after that. And I hadn't watched it for years, and then recently on Netflix and on TV they've been showing a few virus films, and I thought it was pretty pants. But I think it's got to be in there because it's one of the few films that doesn't go into another genre, i.e. it doesn't go into science fiction and it doesn't go into horror with its uh, virus. It is a full virus film uh, with a bit of action in it, and that is Outbreak from 1995. So this one, directed by Wolfgang Petterson, who did Das Boot, uh, and In the Line of Fire, so a good, good action director. Um, Dustin Hoffman doing a late sort of action role, which he'd never done before. Um, by this point, I think it's 58, 57. And he does pretty cool in it. Got Renny Russo in it, who's always good. Kevin Spacey in an early role. Uh, Cooper Gooding Jr. And Donald Sutherland is in it as well. And Morgan Freeman. So it's a great cast. Um, main plot point with this is that the, the, the intro is uh, there's um, they bomb uh, a military camp. Uh, I forget where it is. It's, it's in some jungle area, probably Africa. Uh, because they want to suppress a virus that's come from a monkey, or the monkey's been a carrier. Then later on, uh, this same virus reappears, a monkey is taken out of this, this jungle habitat where this virus resides. Uh, it ends up in mainland America, and it's Patrick Dempsey, McDreamy from uh, Grey's Anatomy, he becomes the first uh, carrier, and he dies, and then it spreads like wildfire. So it's interesting exploring that thing that... Uh, humans coming into contact with habitat that they shouldn't and this is something we'll we'll come back to uh, it's something you know which arguably this is what's happened in the situation we're in um so this film yeah it just ends up being cheesy um but it's got some uh, it's got some good things there's a good bit where dustin hoffman realizes it's gone airborne you know and the, the camera you know uh, kind of pans up and goes through digital 
digital shot through the uh, ventilation. Uh, people die a pretty horrible death. It's kind of a bowler times ten or something like that. Um, uh, it's got some bad effects work. There's bits where there's a helicopter chase, which isn't that great. Um, so it's kind of dated, but it is good on like you know the hazmat suits. How dangerous the virus is. He has to find a host animal uh, with this. Then he can create a, a serum, and that's what he's trying to do. Uh, in some films, they try and find patient zero, or you know. Uh, where the virus has started, but he wants to find the host animal, um, and that uh, in the, the you know the, the chase sequence in um, don't um, whoever joke made me mate's like don't shoot the monkey. Not that it says that dialogue. Um, so it's an entertaining film. It's just a bit nineties, um, you know. Uh, but that's kind of like me saying. So I feel like I had to be in there. Uh, my choice at number eight is a film called Carriers, a little known indie uh, horror thriller. Uh, I enjoyed this when I watched it. It stars Chris. Uh, Pine, Captain Kirk. It was actually directed by two brothers, brothers Alex Pastor and David Pastor. It kind of came and went a bit. It had some good uh, reviews, but um, this uh, it's typical post-apocalypse, and uh, there's an infection virus. It's spread worldwide. It's killing most of the population. There's two brothers, Brian, the older brother, played by Chris Pine, and the younger brother. Um, and what they're doing, they're just trying to stay safe. Uh, the the elder brother character, Chris Pine character. He's trying to keep his brother safe. They're just uh, and there's that thing where they're trying to find somewhere where they can feel safe and connect with people who aren't infected. Um, and that's the sort of principal driving plot. When people come near them, are they infected? Are they coming across infected people? Uh, but it, if it handles that well. Um, it handles that suspicion of people. You know, at the moment we're trying to keep two meters or going no closer than a meter to people. Stuff like that. I could have the virus. You could. You know, we might give it to each other, to someone else. It's that paranoia thing, and I think it taps into that well. It's a real short film. I'm just checking on here, 85 minutes. Um, you know, it's reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, sites like that. I kind of average about 7 out of 10, but I think it's worth checking out. Uh, and it kind of, it's kind of the one that kind of recalls something like Survivors more. I mean, you know, the TV show I was talking about. So that's my number eight. Number seven, uh, this film is from the fan footage genre. Um, now that's a genre I don't like, but when I watched this, I thought this is really good. Um, and it's Rec, it's Spanish. Uh, it's from 2007. So it's kind of Rec, R-E-C for short. Um, I forget, if I'm honest, how the fan footage thing works in it, but uh, I think a uh, there's rumors of an outbreak in an apartment at Barcelona and the doctor goes in to a news report, I'm just looking here, and a cameraman go in, so his camera uh, is what's recording the footage but basically uh, an old lady gets infected and has superhuman strength and the virus spreads the apartment block gets shut down quarantined um, and uh, it's pretty scary um, you know it goes into full full on horror uh, full on horror stuff um, just thinking about it when you've got like Cloverfield as well has got kind of found footage from the alien invasion but there's a kind of a viral element to that with some horrible creatures as I remember and there was a film with the guy from CSI which is a similar thing where he's shut himself in his house and kind of he's trying to stop it getting in but, but at the end of the film he's, he's actually quarantining himself and I forget the name of that it'll come to me but again, like I said, this one, they're basically quarantining the building. Um, you know, at the moment, we're quarantining ourselves sometimes, uh, staying inside. Um, but it goes into full on, like I say, it's full on horror. This, uh, I think there's two other wrecks. The final wreck set a wedding, and it, the, the virus sets off there, and the wedding's being videoed. I forget what the second one is, but this was remade as Quarantine in America. And it's a decent remake as well. So it just follows the same plot, same found footage thing, like that. But that's a good one. I mean, uh, you know, Wreck, has it got elements of sort of zombie horror? It's difficult to sort of say that. I think of zombie films, it's the undead. Yeah. And we'll come to a film later, people call it a zombie film. It's not really. It's just people go insane and mad. That's what happens in World War Z. Um, the virus spreads and people kind of act like fast running un undead zombies, but they're, they're not risen from the dead. Okay, so that's Wreck. Um, that was actually directed by two people. Uh, one... Uh, Balaguero and Paco Plaza. Um, but that's a good one. Uh, you know, it does what it says on the tin. Okay, so number six now. Um, so this is the first example of science fiction. 
I'm just going to click up here. I first saw this film back in about 1985 or before. I was staying at my grandma's down in Kenilworth in the Midlands. Uh, and I saw it once and I didn't see it for years again, which is always interesting because when you watch it again, sometimes it's not as good. And if I'm honest, this film wasn't as good the second time I watched it, but it's just one of those films, it's got something. And then everyone who sees this film, uh, you know, generally feels the same. It's just got that funky 70s Um And it stars Charlton Heston, it is the Amiga Man. Um, so 1971, it's directed by Boris Segal. Um, he directed li very little of note. Um, but um, just reading the plot, because I've kind of forgotten it, there's been uh, a scene of Soviet border conflict. It escalates into full war, biological warfare, destroys most of the human race. So biological warfare puts a virus out there. So what's fascinating about this, this is from the book I Am Legend by Richard Matheson, the great writer, and obviously that was this was also made uh, remade as the Will Smith vehicle in 2007, I think. Um, so... Uh, Charlton Heston is basically on his own. Um, he's kind of like the last man on earth type syndrome. Uh, and he's kind of wandering around uh, deserted Los Angeles. There's a great bit where he goes to the cinema and he just watches the only film he's got access to in a loop, which is Woodstock. Um, pardon me. And he, um, you know, mouths the words off. And he's got great works of art in his apartment and that. So what he's hiding from is in infected people. Um, they're almost like vampiric characters. Um, and they're led by a guy called Matthias, Jonathan Matthias, brilliantly played by, um, oh, what's the name of the actor? Sorry, Anthony Zerb, apologies. Anthony Zerb is in Licence to Kill, plays Milton Crest in that. Anyway, he plays a former news anchor. Quite interesting, that plot point. Um, the guy uh, is a celebrity in the in the previous world, um, or would be known from TV, you know. It makes you think about now, you know, celebrities, you know, having power. Um... So uh, he he has a, he does not bear the scars as his classic line, but he's kind of got a cult. Um, so it's kind of riffing on the Manson thing, I suppose. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's a couple of years after the Manson killings. Um, you've got this cult of uh, infected people. They wear kind of monk-like outfits. The skin's pale, um, and they I guess they think oh they're the new, you know they're the new thing, and other people aren't infected. They're against them. Uh, interestingly enough, that's Anti Zerb played the head of the leper colony, I think, in Papillon couple of years later again uh, infected people being isolated but in this case they're not um charlton heston's character which neville uh is trying to hide from them uh so what's this is about again it's about surviving the virus um uh and they're, they're trying to find a serum at the end they do uh he hooks up with a couple of people i think she gets infected but um, only partially uh at the end of the film, Charlton Heston dies, uh, does his usual sacrifice thing. Basically, after Planet of the Apes, uh, he did another cypher film as well. He always kind of sacrifices himself at the end. It, it plays up, I'm just looking at the film poster here, and it, it, it's quite a horror poster. You've got Charlton Heston with his uh, gun and his telescopic sight, and then the infected characters, you know. It's uh, channeling vampire, zombie type of thing. But I think it's a, it's a great film, and it's got like dodgy crash zooms and stuff like that, but... And a fun soundtrack, but it's just one of those films that are made in the 1970s where you've got a whole host of sort of post-apocalyptic sci-fi. I think this is one of the the best examples. So that is my number six. So that is the end of part one. So uh, we'll move to part two soon, but um, we'll establish a few film themes, trying to get to safety, trying to band with people who like-minded people who are infected. Um, uh, trying to find the source of a virus um, uh, and trying to cure a virus, which the Amiga Man had a little bit of. Okay, so I'll see you in part two. Thanks very much.